I'm Dr. Christian Lorson. I'm a professor at the University of Missouri, and I've been working on SMA for about 14 or 15 years now. And I've been the scientific director at Fight SMA for about five years. I would say that SMA research is not just abstract. It's something that when you come to a meeting like this and meet the families and you meet kids with SMA, you go from working at the bench and working with clear colorless liquids to being able to identify with what you're doing and you know that you actually have a, miss, a mission and a purpose. And you can see that in the day-to-day -day activity that you're not just working, you're working for kids that you've met at these meetings, you're working for kids in the future. And I think it, working on SMA really gives your research a, a, a very important face and hopefully that you're doing something good to help some, someone down the road. One of the things with SMA is that I believe that there will also be some broader implications for other neurological disorders because a lot of the same hurdles that you face in SMA, other diseases face as well. And this could be something as relatively simple as blood-brain barrier penetration. It could be timing the delivery, developing an appropriate delivery strategy. Those things all impinge on other diseases. I'm not sure if stimulating SMN2 is going to per se change other neurological diseases, but there are so many applications, whether it's going to be developing an appropriate vector for motor neuron uptake or de developing a chemistry on the ASO backbone that allows for sustained expression in motor neurons. I think all of those sound SMA specific but could easily have broader applications to other diseases. I think for the families and for the patients who may not be impacted by some of the ongoing work that they have helped lay the foundation for this wave of clinical trials that will likely be coming forward and that those families and the researchers are incredibly grateful for their effort to push this forward. And so hopefully what we can do is find compounds that are effective for one group, move them into the next group, and then really learn whether or not they are true true therapeutics for SMA and that hopefully these will then be broadly based for more than just one isolated type of SMA. I would say that the, the change over the, the last couple of years is remarkably palpable where it's gone from not just trying to hope for therapeutics. We now understand so much more than we did. The therapeutics that are being developed they're based upon remarkably sound science and a basic understanding of the disease and the gene behind this disease. And so what you see is actually hope and excitement, not just from the patient community, but from the researcher community as well. And I think that's probably the biggest thing that I've seen evolve over the last 10 to 15 years, is that it's hard to not be excited now. Um, there really are likely to be some advancements that really hopefully change some lives in the coming future. I'm Chris Larson. Thanks, Fight SMA, for paving the way.